But now, boom, go. Starting live. We'll get some shares going. All right. Bang, and we are live. So we uh, some shares go. going here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share it from your account. Yep, we'll get some shares going here. here. All right, are we up here? There we go. We are live. We'll get some shares going here. Where are we going to share it to? We're going to share it to some mm. here. Spread the love yep. to everybody out so everyone gets blessed with our presence here tonight. If only there was a way to share it before we click the live button. I wish there was because this is always silly in the beginning, but it is what it is. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm done sharing. I'm an oversharer. I'm an oversharer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry, Steve. He gets more entertaining in a minute. Right. Okay. Well, that's, no worries, man. I'm just in, sipping off the combi cup here in the chill that's zone. Let's share this one. Did you get it to Entourage? We'll throw it into uh, Entrepreneurs. I'm streaming it in Entourage. Right. All right. Well, there's Entrepreneurs. Let's send it over there. And then we'll get going. Send it there. Adam says you're the man, Steve. <laughs> well, hey, I appreciate that, Adam. Thank you very much. All right. Good stuff here. All right. We ready to do this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, we got Steve on tonight, Steve Gamlin. Um, he stepped in. Dr. Nicole was supposed to be on tonight, and she was feeling ill. So uh, at the last minute, she uh, asked if she could duck out. We don't want to bring her in when she's not in her best fighting shape. So Steve jumped right in, and it's uh, a treat to be with Steve. Uh, those of you that don't know Steve, Steve is the motivational firewood guy. Um, he blends back-to-back -back positivity, visual visualization, and humor while teaching his clients to see desired outcomes, understand their why, and build action plans to achieve them via his vision board mastery program, one-to-one, -one, and group coaching, plus live and virtual events. So that gives you the, the formal version of it, but Steve's just a cool dude. Um, Sounds like you read that, dude. Off I did, list. right? That was pretty good. That was impressive because <laughs> there's no way I memorized that. It's like you got a little chalkboard, like Steve's got. That's it. We got the chalkboard yeah. going. So, uh, so Steve, what's motivational firewood, dude? Why are you here? I'm here, actually. Motivational firewood. Actually, only uh, trademark on that. I've had for, for about the last 16 years. It, so, here's the thing: what it comes down to. I've been a speaker now for about 17 years, and so many people that you just hear motivational speaker and they think TV preacher. You know, I can change your life. And, <laughs> I had a great conversation with a professional speaker early on in my career. And he said, what sets you apart? And after about three minutes of saying, I like to help people and coming up empty, I said, you know what? Here it is, Don. This is the gentleman's name. I said, look, if somebody pays me to come in and speak or they pay to come and hear me, so I'm not trying to change their life. But if they wake up the next day and they think one more positive thought, speak one more kind word, especially about themselves and take another positive action. I said, if they get a spark in their heart, it's kind of like I just gave them a piece of motivational firewood. Mm -hmm. Then they can do something with it. And he just said, do you know anything about trademarks? And I said, not a clue. He said, <laughs> he said look into that. He said, you know, I, I love the description of it. I love the whole metaphor about the firewood thing. He goes, but you just lit up when you described it that way. He goes, run with that. And I've, that's been the thing ever since. So, you know, I don't claim I can change anybody's life, but man, I'm a natural storyteller. If I share a story or a tip or a tactic or, a, you know, a, an action step you can take and you just marry it to that spark in your heart and do something with it, well, we've created firewood. It's our job, I right? Love that. That's what we do. I love that. Fire starts fire. We get the right guy on tonight. Yes, <laughs> that's that's my, my, my trademark. I should probably trademark that. I say that all the time. But um, that's uh, some good stuff. I say it all the time. You know, we... Oh, the fire that we have in our lives is what other people see and what makes them catch on my ride at dawn here people see me doing that and they see my positive messages in the morning and they're grabbing onto that and they're making changes in their life and if i could touch one person a day we're changing the world 365 people at a time so and that's you know, it that's what we do right so that's uh that's your thing uh, if you haven't noticed he's got the uh radio voice he's uh oh he radio, does <laughs> the radio personality for uh, many years uh, it used to be, you, you know, and the funny part is I was, I was in the radio industry. I was part of rock morning shows here in Northeast U.S. for 10 years. Here's the thing. I wasn't actually on air until about the eighth year. I did not have the confidence. I certainly did not have this voice. Uh, 
I, I just didn't believe in myself enough. So I was an off air morning show producer. I mean, I won all kinds of awards as a producer. I worked really, really hard. Didn't have the guts to get on the air until I had to, because our morning guy quit. And the owner of the station was going to put us back on satellite. And we had worked hard for almost four years to get it off satellite. And I just raised my hand and go, uh, guys, I've been in the radio industry for eight years. And in parentheses, I said, uh, never on the mic. <laughs> and uh, they let me, they gave me a little test drive to see if I could, you know, get back in vocal shape. And uh, a week later, one day it just fell out. I just said, hey, look, guys, I've been trying to sound like a cool DJ all week. Uh, you know, I might suck, but if you tolerate me reading the weather for the next 42 seconds, I'll play you a kick-ass rock song. Love it. My boss thought that was the funniest thing you'd ever heard in the year. He goes, all right, you got the gig. You can stay. <laughs> so do, do the voice. In introduce a record for us. Oh, you want to you want to hear the uh, the oh, over yeah. the top DJ yeah. voice? Yeah, yeah I didn't have that. Voice, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, here's here's what a guy would say coming out of a record going into commercials. Hey, everybody, that was some kind of wonderful by Grand Funk Railroad. And hey, we got some weather. We'll be right back on the flip side of these money makers. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. That's it. That's it. That was... No, I never ever spoke like that on the radio. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We got to pay the bills now, right? That's what they always say when they go that to was, commercials. That was incredible. Exactly. Yep. That the was flip incredible. side of these money makers. That was the worst <laughs> description of commercials I've ever heard. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you just made my night. <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. Awesome. And hey, humor is a part of everything. You know, I everything I do, whether I'm on stage, off stage, backstage, walking down the street, or the Captain Crunch aisle at the store. If I can leave a situation better than I found it and make you laugh in the process and maybe learn something or just feel good about yourself. Rock on. That's that's the script for every Amen. day. Well, laughing yeah, so that's important. Actually, laughing so important. You yeah. make people laugh, man. You, you just you really change the world. Uh, I tell, yeah. say all the time, I was at a seminar for a real estate event, and a guy got up and said, they did a survey of all the people that bought houses and sold houses, and they said, what do you remember about your realtor? And the number one thing that people said, he was funny. Not if they could sell a house, not if they knew the market. They were entertaining because real estate, buying real estate is stressful. It's you know a lot of anxiety. It's not really fun unless you make it fun. And... Be funny. So I kind of took that to harness. You know, I try and have fun with my clients now because it just makes it a better experience. And I have more fun in the process. So, you right. I'm going to have to give that a try, Brian. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I, I you, don't know how to, you don't know how to that. be funny. <laughs> I don't know. No, but you're like, it's, so it's funny. So we make fun of the other agents when they come in and like, you know, the guy's in an open house and he's sitting at the table on his phone. And like, wow, this guy's really trying hard to sell this house, right? He's buried in his phone at the open house and... You know, my clients see that, they start laughing, and now they're making comments like, wow, this guy's really trying hard, you know. Mr. Personality over here trying to sell this house, buried his head in the phone on the kitchen table. And, You're uh, so mean. Yeah, but it's maybe true. He was, maybe he was trying to sell it to somebody who was texting. Yeah, no. That's not how you sell properties. But that's why we do That's why we do so good at it, because most people don't even try. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I've run out. How's the real estate market up there, Steve? Uh, very high prices right now. We've uh, My wife, every once in a while, she sends me a text and she goes, do you have any idea what our house is worth right now? And I say, <laughs> yeah. Do you have any idea how much it's going to cost to replace it? And she goes, yeah, yeah just keep all your stuff right where it is. Like, yeah, yeah. No doubt. You know, I built Let's this recording packet. studio three years ago after we bought it. And, and I'm like, I don't want to leave that. I spent three months building a recording studio. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've run out of houses to sell. Yeah, like the, de the demand, yeah. like the demand is is still. I mean, it's just been sky high all year. So, um, have to find something else to sell. What do you think, Brian? So anything, you know that. Just <laughs> can't even sell cars right now either. You can't get cars right now. Mm -mm. No, no, there's a shortage of new cars too. I just put up a 2003 Chevy 2500 series van with 205,000 miles on a work van. You know, beat up, whatever. Threw it up for 49.50. Had about 75 people that wanted it. Like 200,000 miles, like guys lined up to take the thing. I was like, man, I should charge more for it. But you can't buy a truck right now. You literally can. We went to the, I think it was the Ford deal. We checked them out. They said, there's nothing on the schedule right now, like coming in. Like usually you have a ticket, like these are coming next month. Guys, are, there's nothing even on the schedule. Like we don't, we, we don't even know if we're getting inventory. It's crazy. It's crazy. So if you're buying like a used work van now, they're selling for more than sticker price of new vans because they don't, you can't get a new van. Pretty tough on a contractor society. Oh. I guess anyone, right? Uber drivers and anyone else that needs vehicles. Your friends that do leasing, it's like, there's no deals. They can't get cars to sell people. You know? hmm. Definitely a wild, wild times we're in right now. I guess because cars don't stop wearing out, do they? No, no. Oh, they'll keep yeah. driving. Never really thought about that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Interesting. So moving on from that then. <laughs> <laughs> As my it's, car goes to the mechanic tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that's Take what mechanics are one. for. That's yeah. what mechanics are for, you know. Shit. Like, so we, we have don't a great have to... one. And he's been he's he's had my family's vehicles for almost 30 years. He's worked on them just super above board good guy integrity and i mean i got a 2010 honda crv with almost a quarter million miles on it and this guy has been taking care of it since day one it's a honda they go forever yep yeah 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 you know, we got work vans with three i think one's got 340 on it something like that chevy vans they keep going you can take care of them you know transmissions go about a hundred thousand miles water pumps about a hundred thousand miles and motors will go forever but uh, we take care of them, you know, right? That's what we do. Take care of stuff in your life in a less. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, everything. Steve, <laughs> behind your head, mate, what is Vision Board Mastery? Is that something you've come up with? Yeah, it's a program I created over the years. Uh, when I started as a speaker, The Secret had just, I always do the quotes, The Secret had just come out on DVD. And, you know, it was a really good broad brush of law of attraction and a little touch of visualization in there, about 98 minute long DVD for three minutes, about two thirds of the way through this guy named John Asaraf was talking about these things called vision boards. And I was just fascinated by it because at the time I was still a couple of years into putting my life back together after blowing the whole darn thing up, radio career, first marriage and financial stability all at once. And Are I we started related? about vision. Yeah. What's that? We related. I, think oh, yeah. are, I know. It's related. related. Early midlife yeah. crisis at age 35, I just blew everything up because I was just fried. I, I, yeah. I just ground it out for 15 years worth of hours in 10, and everything just fell apart. And, and I started to learn about this thing called visualization and vision boards, and I've always been fascinated by them. Never knew the mechanics behind it or what was really going on with the quantum physics, quantum mathematics, and mechanics at the cellular level, but I understood that the more I focused on what I wanted and really get descriptive about it and really mm. felt it and connected emotionally to it, the more rapid my life started getting put back together and good things were coming my way. And I was seeing opportunities that I used to miss and, and just the clarity around it. And I couldn't really find a program out there that I liked. Too many people were having vision board parties. Matter of fact, I have a t-shirt over there that says, friends don't let friends attend vision board parties. Was that really a thing? Yeah. Yeah, for 25 bucks, you can go get loaded on some wine, cheese, and crackers and use your scissors, glue sticks, glitter, and magazines and create your future. And I just thought that was, I mean, it's its something, it's kind of like resolutions are to goals. This it's country something. never ceases to surprise yeah. me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right around this time of the year, believe me, pay attention to social media for 25 bucks. You can go hang out with a bunch of people and, uh, you know, drink wine and cheese, crackers, scissors, and all be, that. To be and fair, though, you guys- your future. You guys invented line dancing too, so you know you, you, you put that on the world as well. But no, so you actually go to a shop and sit around and, and design your future. Some people do, yes. They get together and they giggle and laugh and they think that they're creating their dream future. Where, and I'll put and I'll set up the contrast. There's there's ten steps, ten modules in my version of the training program. Mm -hmm. You don't gather pictures to module seven. And what I feel is missing from pretty much every other program out there I've seen is the internal work. You know, understanding where you are right now, understanding where you want to be, who you need to become in the process, exactly what you want and what your goals are going to look like, feel like, sound like, smell like, be like. And really do some work in advance, not just throwing a wish list out there or doing what all the gurus tell you, which is, you know, the brand new quarter million dollar car the yacht the mansion and all these all this bling that a lot of people are out there parading success you know success is whatever it means to you and, and that's where i really try to dive in with people is get them to understand what success is for them take away all the trappings that everybody else says it's supposed to be all the celebrity and all the what the influencers say on social media think about exactly what you want mm -hmm. and then how to get it who already has it who can you model who can you Channel your behavior after. Who could mentor you? Whose video should you watch? Whose book should you read? Who should you watch on Facebook Live and broadcasts? Who should you be paying attention to and getting clues from? You know, that is so much more important than what other people are saying success should mean in your own life. No, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Big houses just mean big bills generally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They do. And, and big driveways to... Snowblow. 
<laughs> you hear a lot of guys talk about that, right? You know, say, you know, I want to make a million dollars. Why do you want a million dollars? Well, you know, yep. I want this house, I want this, I want that. Well, that's only half a million dollars. Why are you, why are you going for a million if half a million is going to make you happy? You know, start with that and something you can attain easier than something giant that you don't need that you might get discouraged on. It kind of the concept's kind of neat. Like, what do you really want? Right? That's, yeah. we yeah. all say that to my, I say it to myself all the time. Like, what do I really want? Like, you know. Yeah, yep. it all sounds and, good. And you got to have an emotional connection to why you want it. Oh my yeah. God, that is the fuel in your tank. That's good. That's what's going to keep you going when other people are trying to kick you down. Yeah. If, if you don't know your why, you can get you can get tripped up by a pebble in the road. If you know your why, you're going to plow through a Jersey barrier to get where mm -hmm. you want to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure. So you are. Uh, you got snow up by you yet? We had our first storm this past weekend, and everybody drove like maniacs and bought up all the toilet paper, milk, and bread. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Milk it's and bread. The first storm in New England. That happens every year. That never ceases to amaze me. I'm yet to see a storm yeah. that happens that you can't actually go out and get milk and bread within 24 hours. So, but, yeah. uh, milk and bread, world's ending. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So we got some uh, <laughs> Northeast people here, as opposed to our, our Southern friend over here. Our mm -hmm. our southern, southern New England. Would they call him Southern New England or Southern England? Or Northern? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no, they call the Northeast. I, they call New England. So, yeah. so I, you've lost me, mate. He's old England. <laughs> We're just rambling yes. now. But, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> no, we don't. We don't get a lot of snow down in Texas. We we did last year. It got yeah, quite quite cold. When Tom Keenan um, came down, he brought the snow with him, and uh, yeah, that was yeah. his fault last year. <laughs> yeah. my sister lives down there and I, I i say you know honestly some people were, were, were laughing but i believe me i know the terror and the panic of it all especially you had the ice storms last year as well that and was crazy when, mm -hmm. when you're not prepared for stuff when you don't even have the infrastructure to take care of it it's scary and, and i felt so bad for you know people with medical conditions oh, yeah. and all these other things i mean it's just not something you expect there but you gotta you just you gotta get through it as best like, you can. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it was pretty pretty fucking cold. <laughs> it was very bad, um, you know. And and people made fun of us for not being prepared for the winter. But that was a that was a once in a hundred year winter. Like, yeah, that was I, I've lived crazy. I've lived here twenty years and never seen anything like it ever. Yeah. Like while I've been here, so yeah, it was quite the surprise. Mm. Uh, hopefully not again this year. I like snow, but like from the inside looking out. It makes everything look nice and pretty and white, and then you can just like close the door and go back to the fireplace. Yeah, I think that's that's where snow belongs. <laughs> it's you know it's fun for the first day when it, while it's snowing and this and that, and then you got to yeah. go out and put the plow on the truck and go do parking lots and shovel, you know, shovel walks and mm. salt yeah. and all that good stuff, and then it gets yeah. nasty and dirty and gross and it's no fun after like the first twenty four hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's most fun with the kids. Yeah, the yeah. kids love it. It was good for making money when I used to do that a little bit more. But yeah, yeah. So, all right. See, so what else uh, do we have with you? You um, you did stand up comedy, right? That was something I did. Yeah, for seven years. Yeah. Uh, my my speaking career and my stand up comedy career were born at exactly the same moment That's in awesome. time because I was working. I this was again in the really dark days of putting everything back together about 18 19 years ago and uh on a friday afternoon in august of 2003 when it was super hot and humid up here in southern new hampshire i had three bucks in my pocket and went and hit a bucket of i, I can't even say i went and hit a bucket of golf balls i took out the frustrations of life on a three dollar bucket of golf balls at a driving range and uh, i'm such a bad golfer i went to the farthest tee box on the property so i wouldn't damage anybody's vehicle <laughs> And uh, I was standing underneath the big metal power lines with the big towers, metal towers are right in front of me. So, of course, I'm just trying to hit them because it made a hell of a racket. And uh, a thunderstorm came ripping through and everybody but me ran from the storm. And I was just so frustrated with life and myself and just mad at myself for the decisions I'd made. And so I sat there for an hour, uh, barefoot in the wet grass, under power lines in a thunderstorm, even held up the club a couple of times and mm -hmm. said, I dare you. Mm -hmm. and uh hit my bucket and the buckets of two guys who left and by the time i got back to my car the sun came out and the rain stopped and i just thought that was the funniest thing it was like god was saying you have no idea how i just protected your butt yep, yep. <laughs> I was talking about that a day later with my brand new life coach and he goes so how was your week and i said put down your pen and listen to this 
and I just tried to make it sound really funny what what had happened. And he said, I got to ask you this. You ever thought of becoming a motivational speaker or stand-up comedian? I think you'd be really good at both. Funny you ask that. I've wanted to do both for years. I just never had the guts or the knowledge of how to start. And on his desk was a brochure for a local community college. Two weeks later, they had a class starting called Intro to Stand-Up Comedy. Like, I didn't even know something like that existed. <laughs> and I was there. And then he said, you ever heard of Toastmasters? And I said, mm, kind of. Three weeks later, I was at my first Toastmasters meeting. And within a year, not that I was making a lot of money, but I was actually getting paid to do comedy and uh, had my first paid speaking events. That's fun. That's fun. I mean, it's one thing to get up on stage and talk, but to get up on stage and try not to bomb is, uh, you know, people don't expect it to be funny when you get up this, you know, on stage, but then yeah. to try and be funny and like Sam tries to be funny, but you know. <laughs> well, Sam's got the accent, which is just already automatic. Makes everything cool. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, and it's funny too, because you know, it's Sam's, Sam's accent. Uh, I'm on a radio station over in England. I have three episodes a week on a station called Yawa radio streaming out of London. Oh, wow. And uh, I, whenever we first got on a call with the staff over there, and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make them laugh and this and that. And they said, you don't have to try so hard. We love your accent. And I'm, thinking, <laughs> and I, and I'm like, uh, I have an accent. She's like, compared mm -hmm. to us. It's yeah. Really so as fascinated as much as we love accents here in America, and believe me, we get a hundred of them, depending on where mm -hmm. you live. It's just so weird that people from other parts of the world just enjoy you being mm -hmm. you and, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. that and i was on a radio uh, uh podcast in australia last week as well and he said man i can listen to you talk all day i'm like really because nobody here wants to pay me to talk that <laughs> <long>. <laughs> sure, but okay. it's just it's just really cool just i mean be funny leave, make people laugh be yeah. humorous and some people say but i'm, I'm not funny just be real and notice what's around you that's interesting and the more yeah. interested you are the more interesting you get and, and I just wish more people understood that. You don't have to tell jokes. I never told jokes. I still don't tell jokes. Well, a lot of it's in I sarcasm, stories. right? We, we all, we're all very well, sarcastic, and we take little digs and stuff like that, and we have fun with it, yeah. and giggle, and yeah. try and you know, beat each other up outside the box and make each other laugh and have fun, yeah. right? You know, If you're not having fun, what's the point, right? So yeah. try and introduce yeah. it to everything in life. You know, make, Be silly. You yeah. know? There's no reason we got to be so stiff all the time. Let's try and be silly a yeah. little bit and have some laugh. Like I said, I go to Texas, and... I put my cowboy outfit on, and uh, I don't have an accent at all. So, uh, <laughs> so it's good fun. Everyone's like, what, "What's wrong with you?" I'm like, "Listen, it's fun. Why not?" Right? So it's become my thing now, yep. right? Because we're not having fun. What's the point? You know. So now, yep. last time we were at live, Sam's like, you know, like, you know, we'd meet new people at live, and where do you think he's from? And I wouldn't say anything. You know, he's probably from Texas. He's got a cowboy outfit on. And then I start talking, and I'm like, wait, where the hell are you from? <laughs> Yep. He, he went to he went to the he went to the most cowboyist sparkliest shop he could and said make me this. a caric <laughs> make me a caricature of a cowboy that's it yep. quickly that's yep. exactly what happened Wait, he looks make like me fit in no he looks like he's from a comic <laughs> he looks like he's from a comic book i was there i go, was there go bigger go home you know like, that's the way we the do it the caricature I'm surprised you didn't have like a cod piece or something, you know. I don't know. I don't really know if Christine sad. knew what she started when she took me to boot barn. She's like, you know, it started with boots, and I was like, I like that. She's like, all right, you can wear it. And I was like, how about that one? And how about that one? And next thing you know, I got a whole cowboy wardrobe. But hey, listen, why mm -hmm. not? You're not having fun. What's the point? Yep. Yep. Hey, when you can make it come to life, and you can just just be. That's it. You know, I, I had a teacher one time. He says, you know, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. When I throw you out of class, just look like you belong wherever I tell you to go. Mm. <laughs> and, and he would never send anybody to the principal's office. He would tell people to sit on the bench outside the office. And he said, look, just go be yourself and act like you belong there. So no matter what, how you look or what you did, just act like you belong wherever you're at. And Because that's, that's really, it's an energy. Mm. Hmm. You know, I, I, know, I know so many people that are say, oh, I can't go on a podcast. Why? Because I'll be nervous act like you're having a conversation with a friend of yours. Cause that's really all these shows are. I mean, we're hanging oh, yeah. out, we're, we're, yeah. you know, we're three buds. And, and I said, whenever you look in that camera, just know that that's someone's eyes connecting mm -hmm. with you, having a conversation. And this is probably 65 or six shows for me so far this year. Mm -hmm. And they're all the same. They're all just a conversation. We all belong here. Yeah. We, we all want each other to succeed. We're cheering each other on. And my job as a guest, even a last minute guest is to just bring some good energy and, and hopefully make you guys look 
look good for having me on here. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the whole thing. Yeah, well, that's what me and Sam just started over a cigar uh, at a live, I guess, the summer live, I guess we were at, and we went out for cigars yeah. one night, and we connected instantly, and uh, we kind of realized... We Can't get rid of him now. Yeah, we were separated yeah, at birth, keeps I coming think, back. right? And then uh, we said, you yeah. know, we should do something and to give back to the to the Apex community a little bit, and then to our own personal community. So listen, and let's give everyone a stage, <clears throat> right? So we get up there, and we, you know, we talk, people get to know us, but we get to give a, a lot of people a stage that... Uh, you know, come on! Uh, I've had a lot of people reach out to me. I go live every morning with my We Ride at Dawn. Those that don't know, and a lot of people come up and go, "How do you go live every morning?" I say, "Just do it. Just own it. Just yep. I talk to someone. You know, I just get up there and tell my story. Sometimes it's better than others. Sometimes I'm tired, and you know, maybe sometimes I'm hungover, and I shouldn't. You know, been out late last night, and I'm still getting up and riding. But you know what? We get up and we ride every day. That's that's the the motto, right? No matter what happens yesterday, we get up yep. and ride the next day. And um, yep. so now I've had so many people approach me about going live, and it's almost like become like a coaching thing. Um, I said, "Good, you're gonna come on our show this week. <laughs> Sink or swim, let's go." Yep. But it really is. Just, okay, and in the Facebook yeah. Live thing is something I fought for a long time. I didn't do my first one until July of 2018. Now the technology's wow. been around forever, yeah. mm -hmm. but I, I I just couldn't do it. I could sit here in the recording studio and do take after take and splice together something that I thought was okay, but I just. Oh, I hesitated going live. And then I had a buddy of mine reach out. He was doing a 30 day challenge. And he says, okay, bro, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to ask you a question. You go here, go live and just answer the question. He goes, just don't freak out. And when you're done, just hit stop. And I, I just did it one night. I answered the question. Now it took me, hit my thumb like five, six times before I ended the call, hit the button. Right. And he called me up. He goes, how was that? I said, oh, my gosh, that felt awesome. It's fun, yeah. And I just started going and going. And the one Facebook Live I've done that everybody in the world who's seen it remembers is the one I did in my driveway, January 29th, 2019, in a blizzard, talking about how people could help the homeless in their community who were stuck out there in, in the snow and in the woods. Cool. We got a, you know, homeless camps along the river near the town, a couple towns away. And uh, I had to actually do it twice because the first time I, hit the button through the slush on my phone and I accidentally deleted the video. <laughs> oh man. Came in here to the mirror, looked at myself, looked like a drowned rat. I got snot coming down my face and I just looked like a mess. And I go, well, I can go upstairs and shower and come down and get nice and warm and do it, you know, with the camp, big camera, or I can do nothing or I can go back out in the driveway. Did it again. Got all emotional all over again. And in nine, uh, 11 days, it had 9,000 views. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Well done. And I don't care about the numbers. It's how many people said, hey, Steve, I saw your video. Man, you looked like crap. But, hey, I wouldn't help the yeah. homeless in my community today. Yeah. yeah. I, I got about this, impact? I just I just came from the homeless shelters by by us. So we started a tradition, yes. I don't know, probably 10 years ago. I bring So I'm part of a nonprofit that we run this organic farm. And we sell Christmas trees. So the this girl, Linda, uh, heads up the youth ministry at the church, said, hey, listen, we're going to the homeless shelter. Do you think you could bring a Christmas tree from the farm? And I'm like, yeah, let's do this, you know. It started with one shelter. Now we do the. We started with the women's shelter. Now we do the men's shelter too. We throw two trees in the back of the truck, and we go there, and it's just a humbling experience. It really like you, our worst day is someone's dream come true. I mean, so um, and I, I was live on, and I tried to talk, and honestly, I, I started getting choked up, and I couldn't talk because it's uh, it's yeah. hard, you know. It's it's the watching what what people are dealing with, and then we have the nerve to not be grateful for everything in our life, even the bad stuff that makes us grow. It's just these people here just wish they had a piece of what we have. I mean, they literally have nothing. And it's very humbling. And, it, and it's also awesome, the people that, that are volunteering there. And it's a girl, Terena, that's, that runs these houses. And, I mean, she's a saint. I mean, she's doing God's work, you know, helping these people get a new start. But it's just humbling every year to just, if anyone hasn't done it, go, go work at a soup kitchen, go to a homeless shelter, go volunteer. It's really, really wild. It really puts your life in perspective. So, just a little... Yeah. We have a little yeah. family nonprofit as well called Beachbone Philanthropy. And my wife and I were there yesterday. We did some baking and, and had some items. And my mom and my stepmom are our best of friends. They were there today. They made 70 mini banana breads, wrapped them in red Christmas cellophane, put a candy cane with each one and a little note and a picture of Santa Claus on it. And they were there today handing them out. And, and every single time my mom leaves, she, she'll, I always tell her, I say, take a picture of what you did. And let me know how you felt. And she gets out to the parking lot. She's almost in tears. And she just says, it, it was a room full of love today. She said, they are so wonderful to us. 
oh my gosh, like you said, they wish they could have a tenth of what so many of us do. And but yet they're so grateful. And yeah, and that's a really bad. good like, we take it for from. granted, you know, like like literally we have the nerve to complain. And you know, like what are we complaining about? Like we're blessed, you know what I mean? Like I said, our worst problems, yeah. we're still blessed. You know, it's really it's really humble and you know, I said actually way out the door I threw uh the girl a bunch of money. I said, Listen, do something special for them, you know. Like little banana breads and whatnot. I mean, that means so much to them when yeah. they're eating, you know, rice and beans or whatever, and you know, barely yeah. surviving. That someone actually thought of them and some, did something special for them, especially Christmas time when, obviously, it's got to be yeah. harder than the regular days. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely, we got to give back because uh, we got to do yeah. God's work. That's what we're here for, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so. What else? Uh, so you're actually up there by our buddy Chris Whitehead, who's supposed to come on next week. We'll see if he uh, holds true to that. Nice. Yeah, I was actually working with Chris today, and uh, I was down in uh, in his office in Merrimack. I'm part of Iconic and Apex Accelerator with Chris, right there in the office, actually yeah. on the other side of the wall with him. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You're gonna love having him as part of the show. And you know, it's funny you talked about you guys meeting and having a cigar and leading to this. Mm -hmm. uh, Ten or eleven years ago. I got a direct message on Facebook from some guy named Chris Whitehead. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who he was. And he said, yeah, he had moved up to New Hampshire and uh, he was getting into the networking circles. And I'd been part of it for 10 years up here. And he says, hey, why does everybody keep telling me I got to sit down and have a conversation with you? I said, well, I don't know. You want to grab a sandwich and figure it out? And he said, yeah. And 15 minutes into a conversation, he goes, I don't know where this is, you know, could ever lead, but we're going to be friends forever. Mm. And after an hour of talking, he goes, all right, let me amend that. We're going to be brothers forever. Mm. And Chris brought me, connected me with a gentleman named Lonnie Robinson a few years back. And Lonnie yeah. built up my website and my, Chris got me into Apex seven and a half mm. months ago. Uh, I'm now part of Iconic and Apex Accelerator yeah, yeah. with Chris. And you know, these conversations and people and opportunities, if you don't just stare at your phone or your shoes all day, Mm -hmm. you can see some pretty incredible conversations out there and plug into energy and see what other people are yes. all about yes and, and just saying yes to something yeah we never know where it could where it could lead i love just a random what well, we've talked you know just a random let's say let's talk let's jump on a phone call and let's just find out what you're about and you know you get the, <laughs> the energy transfer i say all the time is like you know we each carry our own energy and our own ideas and sometimes you just have that call and it just that light bulb goes off and like I need to do this, you know, and it's like, it's happened to me a couple of times, especially with the Apex crowd, and it's, uh, it's just inspiring, like, sometimes you just, like, you meet someone new, and you're like, wow, there's a whole new area out there I didn't even think about, you know, it's, uh, and stuff that we know sometimes that you kind of forget about, and, like, being funny, like, you know, like, you know, sometimes you get tired and cranky, and you stop being funny, and you realize, you know, I can be funny, because it helps, helps my business, helps me be happy, yep. you know, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, Sam, like, needs to <laughs> smile more, look. <laughs> It's, it's all moments in energy. I mean, I, I always point up whenever I mention my wife because her office is right above the recording studio. I thought my wife and I have been together 14 and a half. <laughs> we've been together 14 and a half years because I answered in, because I opened an email that I almost deleted as spam <laughs> in June of 07. And it was from her from at that point, 1300 miles away after 21 years of zero conversation after we graduated high school together, I had a crush on her in high school. Wow. And 21 years later, 10 days after I wrote in my journal, I am ready to fall in love. She shoot, shot me an email and I almost deleted it because I thought it was junk mail. Huh. That's and awesome. That's we, so cool. We've been together ever since. So and close, I, man. I, I tell her a lot. I said, look, just know if you ever end our relationship, you're going to demolish my speaking career because that's my <laughs> Oprah store. I, I got on Oprah's radio network four times. <clears throat> talking about how she and I fell in love. And again, it was all a whole visualization thing for me. I was putting my life back together, you know, who I want to become and type of relationship I want to have. And when I finally said I was ready to fall in love, she showed up like 10 days later and I wow. almost blew it by almost deleting an email. Find what you focus on. That's just like something that, yeah. that's been an apex thing that's really just rings in my head. You find what you focus on. Mm -hmm. like if you're focusing yeah. on being depressed and cranky and complaining, that's you're going to find more of it. If you focus on the little wins in your life and the people in your life and the people around you that are winning and the inspiration around you, you just keep finding more and more of it. It's like unbelievable. The people that just keep showing up in our lives. And it's like, you know, someone joins, we connect. You know, Greg Michaelman, um, he's. He's two towns over from me. He kind of he looks like me. He's my little brother. He looks just like you. Yeah. 
And like you know, like I said, good dude. Oh, like, like little twins. You know, there's a guy that grew up two towns over from me. We we met in Texas. You know, it's just and it's just people show up and now we push each other. And he just reached out to me before and uh, you know about another a little give back thing we're trying to do and uh, it's kind of cool. Like you know, just these people just keep showing up and it's just and they keep inspiring and they keep pushing you and you know the, the thing we talked about just reaching out to your friends and saying are you good like and Sam mm-hmm. Sam Friday's Fire did that. I sent him a little video. He sent me one back. It's fun. It's just. Hey, what's going on? Hope life is good. Just thinking of you, like, you know, hope everything's well. And, you know, that means so much. And the, like, and the fact that we need to just get out of our own heads and just, just go and, like, reach out to the world. Because it's, it's, uh, it's just so so good. You know, you could have been the worst day ever and someone sends you a little thing. Hey, you good? I'm like, no, not really, but I am now because you said you're good. <laughs> you know, yeah. Benny Montalbano does that all the time. And uh, he sends me he sends me a silly face of him making a stupid face. You good? You know, and he sends it to me, and I giggle, and I'm like, you're an idiot. Yeah, I'm good. How are you good? You know, and we just a little back and forth in the morning every now and then, and it's kind of like a little pick-me-up, a little cup of coffee you need, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah I love doing that, too, with uh, Messenger on my phone. I just hit that little, and I didn't realize this thing was there until, like, eight months ago. A little microphone. You can leave up to 60 seconds of yeah. voice, or you can do yeah. 20 seconds, I think it's 20 seconds of uh, video. Yeah, it's quick, yeah, but... And I just love, I reach out to somebody, I said, hey, do you remember the time we did this? Oh, my gosh, that absolutely made my day. Hey, I just yeah. get up, and I happen to see your name. I hope you have a great day. Yeah. 99% of the time, these people reach out to me, and the, the phrase I hear most often, oh, man, how did you know I needed that good energy and that laugh yeah. today? Thank you so yeah. Man, you just made my day. Yeah. And my answer is typically the same. Well, I woke up and needed that energy, so thank you for giving me the opportunity yes. to get it because i just made my own day yeah, yeah. and then you know yeah. it, it's like you're playing volleyball with energy you just yeah. keep launching it in a different yeah, direction but the, the, the the secret is if you want to get it you've got to give it first oh, yes. Give us, yes. that's it give us, yes. that's yeah. why I, I say all there's the time, no other way you there's get no that feeling way. in your gut that says like you said i gotta call this person i gotta message this person a lot of times like ah eh, they don't want to hear from me we, we doubt our gut and i gut i say it's the message from god saying hey listen this person needs you to Reach out to them right now. Do it. And like I said, a lot of times we suppress that message, like that that gut feeling that says, I need to call someone, do something, go somewhere, do whatever, you know. And if you think about it in your life, the times when you kind of had that feeling and you didn't follow it, and then something happened and, you know, maybe they got sick or maybe they went away or maybe, and you're like, if I would have just called them, if I would have just reached out to them. And it's like, you know, so I try and be more present in my in my gut, in my head and say, you know, it's something that says you know, that person just showed up. For some reason, they're on my phone right now. Let me just send them a message. You know, randomly, I open my phone up and it happened to be on their number. Hey, you good? And it's funny. And I said, that's when the people reach back and say, you know, how'd you, how'd you know I needed that? And it's like, it's just the way the universe works. But we got to we gotta really dial it in and, and get out of our, our um, I don't know, our hamster wheel, as we call it, we're going through the motions and our, our reactive state and be in our present state. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm a victim all the time. I'm running today. It was a crazy day. I was running all day, and it's like you know, just gotta stop, stop. Let's just let's just evaluate where we are, you know, and really, and then dig in, you know, dig in and say, all right, wait, what am I doing? What's my purpose right now? And is there anyone I can help in this moment? You know, and it, uh, you know, it's, it's a whole different way to look at life and stop. Like, we get very self-centered. Like, I know myself. I got a bunch of stuff to do, and I'm. Oh, I'm, I'm running headfirst at all the tasks I got to do, and I'm not looking at, hey, this guy needs me, and that girl needs me, and this person needs me, and that. And like, you know, you're just so focused on your mission because you know, you I got 20 things to do, and I only have time for 10 of them. But we need to like stop that and really just say, hey, you know what? If we only get 10 done, it's okay. But you know, mm-hmm. that person needs me to say hello. That person needs me to stop and talk to them for 10 minutes. And and then I find that the more I pull back and the more I I just just evaluate who's around me and how to reach out to them and you reach out and you have a conversation that sometimes leads to a, a real estate deal or you know like a certain real estate world's great like all of a sudden i'll just start talking to someone i'm like oh i'm glad you called my friend's looking to buy a house here's their number like you the be, it's crazy it's, you'd be you'd be surprised you'd be surprised how many times you could just say something offhand or drop a meme or some shit and oh my god i'm so happy i need to do this with my house i like i get so much business from just, just giving value out yeah, and just, just, just so hanging fun. it out there. it really is yeah 
Yeah. I love doing that at stores, you know, because you know, it's like right now, at the time of this broadcast is the holiday. So people that work in stores are really stressed because yes. a lot of people out there have just been jerks for years yeah, to them yeah. and they can't say or do anything about it. So every single time I go into a store, my favorite question to ask is, how's everybody treating you so far today? Mm-hmm. <laughs> even if they're even if they have to wear a mask and i get it i i don't care either way when i see their they start to laugh because they crinkle up yeah. a little bit by their eyes and i go oh yeah. I go, you pause i go somebody was a real a-hole earlier today and they kind of look around and they go yeah and i always say the same thing i hope i'm the meanest nastiest person you have to deal with the rest of the, your day and i'll just make them laugh a little yeah. bit while yeah. i'm there while they're cutting the ham and you know slicing the ham yeah. and cheese yeah and, uh, you know, I say it just loud enough so the person behind me doesn't dare be rude. Yeah, yeah. And I've had people ask me, oh, my God, you come in here every single week and you, you pay us compliments and you make us laugh. I got to ask you, what do you do for a living? And I say, this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What do I do? I, no, whether I'm on true. stage or, up, or yeah. on a camera, I said, my goal every day, and this was inspired by watching my grandfather. Leave as many situations a day better than you can find it in the simplest of ways, just with good energy and be a good human being. Just a simple good morning. Sam talks about it, too. Yeah. I ride my mm-hmm. bike in the morning through the park, and everyone's tired and cranky, and they're walking and running, biking, this and that. And I go out of my way, hey, good morning. And I say it loud, and they look at me like, what the hell do you want? Like, who are you? And then they look back, yeah, and the, like, oh, the good fir- morning. The first time, the first yeah. time it pisses them off. They're like, like, what the hell are you talking to me? Time. It's early, you know? And then they're yeah. like, oh, he just said good morning. All right, it's a good thing. Yeah, and I, good morning back. Yeah. And now as I ride, 220-something days now, I've been riding a row, and I don't always hit the same place, but, you know, usually once a week I'll hit the same place, same people are out. And they see me coming now, and I see their, their, their face start to light up. And now, like, hey, good morning, where they used to be like, who the hell are you? Like, why are you saying good morning to me? And it's like, just yeah. those people, I change their day. They see me in the morning. I'm like, they make me, you know, when I see that, now I'm smiling, like, you know, and I'm like, you know, so now that person was a little grumpy and they see me coming. Now I put a smile on their face. And it's so simple just to give that energy and that love to people that, yeah. like, you know, and then same thing. I try and go out of my way to talk to the guy at the deli count. Hey, how's your day going? What's going on? You know, you busy guys today? You know, Christmas is here. You probably got a ton of orders going. Or, you know, tell me, tell me about your business. What's doing? And people love to share and they love to talk and it gets them out of, you know, it gets some people love to talk. Right. So it's funny though. You know, I do that without even thinking about it. It's just how I grew up in a little village. That's just how life was. You never stopped by somebody without a conversation. Yes. You know, mum would get mad at dad because he'd always be like so late getting home. But if you ever went with dad, you know, he'd, he'd stop at one house and talk and then he, you know, stop by the farm to pick up eggs. Well, you'd have to have a talk then. Yeah. And, well, then he got some, he got some beer to go deliver and drop off that he'd made. So you had to have a talk then. And like your entire day was, was a lot slower, oh, yeah. um, you know, shit like we didn't even have computers i don't know what we did at work like there was i, I know there was paper the internet, yeah. and, do you remember those print those printers that had little tractor wheels on them and it yeah. would come out with three oh, different copies matrix, yeah, yeah. what did we do at work without computers i don't remember yeah, yeah. there was a lot of paperwork <laughs> so i spent a lot of time upstate new york my grandfather uh built a uh, bought a farmhouse that was abandoned it was the, the original farmhouse for the farm they had lost to the taxes a million years ago and someone, you know, they came in through the years and, and took all the plumbing out of the house and all the electric out of the house. It was just a shell, and there was animals living in it, and my grandfather was a maniac, decided, I'm going to buy this house and restore it, and I'm going to move up here when I retire. So every weekend in my, I don't know, probably 10 to, I don't know, 20s, every, not every weekend, but most weekends, me and Dad jumped in the car with, or the truck with lumber and materials and whatever. We went upstate and hung out with Grandpa, and we, sometimes we brought a bunch of guys with us from work, and... We worked in this house all weekend. I, it taught me, you know, electric plumbing. I learned all my, everything I do with construction from those weekends. It was a really mm-hmm. cool bonding experience and whatnot with dad and grandpa. My grandfather was actually my best man at my wedding because we had, were so close. But upstate, if someone stopped to talk to you and you didn't stop and talk to him, it was disrespectful. And like it was, and he kind of like taught us this. I, I remember as a young person, like, no, no, if, you know, Kevin from across the street stops by, we have to stop and talk because if I don't, it's disrespectful. Like, you know, if you say, listen, I got to go. I'm sorry, I got to run. That's disrespectful. Like, no, no, I'm important. You know, like, take five minutes and talk to me. And, hey, what's going on? You know, did you milk the cows yet today? And, you know, we're going to go. It's funny, you know. Field. You know, it's. Because you'd be, dude, you'd be, you'd be three quarters of the way through your obligated conversation with these guys. And then another neighbor would just yes, rock up. Like, yes. hey, what's going yeah, on, what fellas? Are you guys doing? Like, Damn it, I got to get out of here, but yes. now I'm going to stay another five minutes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> This is why Tina can't stand going places right. with me because we can never get out of there on time. And when, when we get to the car, she always says, so how do you know those people? 
Yeah, but aren't you aren't you like we never surprised? Met. <laughs> are you surprised by how how, how that's changed? Because yeah. uh, I'm talking. This was 30 years ago. I'm you know I'd be 10 years old, 11 years old. Like life was a series of conversations, and now it's not. It's a series of emails and text messages. Yeah. Um, I found that yeah. I had not love that having conversations. So well, I do too, but like you're not yeah. going to just. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, there's one house at a time anymore. You know, it's it's strange like that. How how everything seems to compress a yeah. lot. We lost a lot of that personal touch. You know, it's just, you know, and then text message. It's hard to get that that little you know tone of your voice when you're kidding around and stuff. Like you know, you try and send a text that you you know joking around, a little sarcastic, and people get offended. But no, no, I'm kidding. Relax. You know, it's like it's just not natural. You know, it's uh. And it's another I, HR, another HR complaint for you, bro. Yeah, that's it. You know, <laughs> I, I still say it's battery charges too, right? I say when you when you have conversations with people, I feel like it charges your battery. Like when you have a, a fun conversation with someone and it was a really nice and they're really good people, and you walk away and you feel charged up. You feel like you know that that, that, that was cool. I'm glad I saw them. I'm glad I stopped to talk. You know, and then I said a text and a an email. It's like there's no energy transfer there. There's no. You know, nothing that builds you up that you walk away from you. I got great another email, great another text. You know, let me shoot this text out while I'm while I'm driving, while I'm doing six different things. I'm shooting this text <laughs> out. You know, and it's like half the time you're like, what am I even saying in that? You know, it's uh, but uh, I don't know. I think we really all got to make an effort to to communicate more, really to, to to reach out and have a phone call. The zooms are kind of great because we get yeah. we get an energy transfer because it's kind of like being in person. You know, you get that. That feeling of uh, yeah, this is, this is a positive influence person. They got positive ideas. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna absorb some of that and maybe add it to my life. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's something that just society's losing, and it's something that we really, you know, I think us in our apex world, when I say we're changing the world. You know, uh, meeting by meeting, and it's it's really that's part of it too. The the fact that we're all connecting and sharing the love, sharing our connections with each other, and sharing our ideas with each other, and genuinely, everybody wants to help you, and it's like. It's just so yeah. cool to be in a world where no one's trying to backstab you, no one's trying to out manipulate you, no one's no one's got ulterior motives. Everyone's like literally like, "What do you need? How can I help you?" You know, mm -hmm. like, and it's just such a cool atmosphere. And I, I call it as uh, you know part of the cult, the culture. It was like, "Oh, you joined a cult," and I said, "Yes, I did. It's a culture like no other." Um, yep. You know, it's, yep. it's just a, such a cool cool vibe, and I tell everyone to come to a meeting, you know, come to a, a live event or whatever and uh, experience it. But uh, and I try and take that what I learn from there and the feeling I get from there and I try and share it, you know, back back at home and it's neat, you know, it's it's just fun to, to you know, leave people better. You know, what you said earlier. Yeah. Just, you know, when they, yeah. I, when you walk in a room, the people light up because they're happy to see you and they want to hear what you have to say or they walk in a room yeah. like, oh, this fucking guy's here again like, you know, and you know, and if they're saying that, you know what, listen, you're living your life right, right? So when you go into a room and people aren't happy to see you, you need to reevaluate how you're living your life. You know. Yeah, November was my first live event. I've been at Apex for almost eight months, and I, you know, because of my schedule of my other business, which is now retired, uh, I've got to go in in November. And as soon as I got there, I mean, I had a T-shirt that said "Got Vision" on the yeah, front, yeah. and then you know, vision board guy yeah, on the back. Yeah. Uh, so it was pretty visible, but it was just so cool. People coming up, oh, Steve, I see you all the time on yeah. Facebook, or I see yes. you supporting people, mm -hmm. yeah. or or bringing some good energy, or being creative, or being funny, or whatever. And it was just so cool being in that room. Yes. I had just as much fun and great energy sitting outside in the hotel lobby, just as people went by, talking with them and networking with them. Uh, somebody came through bringing a bunch of boxes in, and we all just stood up as a group and said, you hey, need? man, you need a hand? Yeah. We all went out to the vehicle. We all carried in boxes and you know moved it. chairs and stuff like that. It just felt it. It felt like home. Yes. I said, "Oh man, these, these are, are my people." people. Yes. And I got my you know my little name thing hanging there. It just felt so good. And a couple of people came over and uh, actually uh, the person who was supposed to be a guest tonight, Doctor Nicole. I wound up sitting next to her at the live event. Uh, she says, "Hey Steve, come on now, sit with us. We get some really good seats." And it was such a good energy. None of these people, other than I think Chris Whitehead, I'd ever met before in person. Yeah, yeah. And he, at the end of the day, he says, "So how was that?" I said, "Man, it's everything you told me it would be in war." He goes, and he winked and he goes, "Glad you finally got your ass down here to a yes. live event." I'm like, "I couldn't come the other times because yeah. I know, I know, I you know." know what they say about that FYE? <laughs> yep. No, it's yep. true, Well, it, it was, yeah. I had to be, I was contracted to be in other places, mm -hmm. and I'm like, the yeah. airlines will never get me home in time, yes, and I'll yes, be in yes, big yes, trouble. Yes. So, yeah, I couldn't go. But, but uh, now you almost get addicted to it. Now it's like I say at the same yeah. all the time, I feel like I'm losing some energy. I need to get to another event because you come home and you're on fire. You're like, I got to, it wears down, and then like, all right, next event's coming. I'm going to get some fire again. 
that's kind of where this came from. Get some fire live. Like we're gonna share some fire, some excitement. You know, and get people going. It's uh, but that um that lobby hangout. So we did that last live was Friday. So I flew in on Wednesday, and we spent like the whole day Thursday just hanging out in the lobby with like we had crowds growing, and we were just like, and again, people were coming in and talking. Hey, what's going on? Welcome. And there's so many people. Me and Sam say it all the time. I mean, I guess we're kind of you know out a lot on all our groups and stuff. So a lot of people know us, but we don't really know them. Like, you know, I mean, if they're quieter and ever really reached out and they follow us, like some of my friends request me and they got 150 Apex friends, friend, 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 you know, so, I, you know, I friend people, I look quick who they are, but a lot of times, listen, you know, I probably friend, you know, half a dozen people, new people a day of Apex type people. And then they come to an event and I'm so-and-so and I'm like, wait a minute. And I'm like, all right, go a little deeper. What have you posted lately? Okay. Yes. I know who you are, you know, and uh, it's kind of, it's weird to have these friends all across the country, some of them that we've never even met before, but know more about us than like, how do you know that? Like, you know, I heard your message the other day in the morning and it really resonated with me. I'm like, that's awesome. Who are you? You know, it's like, and I also find a lot of people commenting about my messages that I never see, like, you know, when I'm live and I see who's watching, like, I never see them comment. I never see who's watching, but I guess they're catching a the replay and, mm -hmm. and you don't realize that that replay is probably more valuable than the live. Um, mm. you know, it's like, and these people see the message and it's just oh, yeah. wild that they reach out and they're just like, you know, that message really hit home today. Thank you for that. And I'm like, I, like, thank you. Thank you for telling me that's cool. Yep. It makes me want to try harder now. You know, it's like, I feel yep. like my messages now. I'm like, all right, listen, I got to dig deeper on these. I got like, people are really like being inspired by these. Like I got to do better. Like, and it drives me to, you know, I appreciate when people, you know, reach out and say that stuff. Cause it really is like, all right. You know, step up your game. It's time to do better. You know, and we're actually making a difference in the world here, and that's that's the goal. You know, it's uh, like a friend yep. of mine. I want to get on here. This guy David Gus, and uh, he's got a saying: uh, "In a world where hate makes headlines, goodness needs to speak up." Right? All the hate makes it all over the newspapers, all over the news, all over the TV shows, even the, the sitcoms and all the you know the reality shows. It's all negative and crap. And there's so yep. much good going on in the world that we don't share it. So it's up to us to share that and put the good out in the world. You know positivity mm -hmm. out in the world and and it changes the world and if you just look how fast apex is growing because people really gravitate to this positive energy this positive vibe this helping people people inherently are good if you watch the news you think that people inherently are bad but i think 98 percent of the people in the world really are good and want to do good and want to help each other but they're so suppressed by you know like they're so afraid to help people they're so afraid what someone's going to say they're so afraid what people are going to think of them they're afraid to go live because i Oh, people are going to think I talk funny. Well, yeah, of course I talk funny. I'm from New York, you know, but, you know, Sam's from, you know, England. And you got the you yep. got the New England accent, and we all talk funny, and that's what makes us great. You know, <laughs> that's what makes us interesting. Yep. You know, that's what makes our story resonate. You know, our, our, our traumas in our lives and our wins in our lives and everything in between. Um, it's, it's neat, you know, the, the story's about meeting your uh, your wife from... What, 21 years later on, through an email? I mean, from high school? That That's wild. That's so cool. You know, that's yep. that's people like to hear those stories. You know, it's uh, yeah. You know, I lead with six kids, so every, you know, six kids isn't normal. You know, I'm definitely something wrong with me, but uh, no, they're awesome. But um, but it's <laughs> say so everything funny. works. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't sound like anything's wrong at all, mate. Works yeah. as nature intended. Yes, yes, I never say no to sex. You know, but um, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> but um. So that, that's my that's my leading line. So like you know, if we're out showing a house and I'm like, you know, and this is only a three bedroom. So when you get have the six kids like I do, you're going to need, you know, we're going to have to add an addition over here. And that's my, my icebreaker. I always say to people like, you have six kids? And then my whole conversation goes from looking at houses to how I have six kids. And then you know, if they want to have kids, they, they only want to have two and this and that. And then we get personal and like, uh, you know, that little bonding experience of we're talking about how many kids they have, want to have and no, I'm, a, I'm one of six, you know, sometimes, you know, or I'm one of four. And what's it like to have such a big family? And the whole topic goes from real estate to life and interaction. And you start bonding. And then it, when you flip back to real estate, it's like, like we connected. Like we're on another level now. And it's, uh, yeah. I find it happening. It's not something I used to intentionally do, but now I kind of, kind of pay more attention to it. I'm like, we need to talk more about just this house. We need to talk about why, what are your goals? What, what is your why? Why are you buying this house? Or do you're looking to you know have a big family then don't buy a little house or if you're looking to not have a big family then a two bedroom's fine but let's talk about what you what your whys are what you're thinking for what your purpose is what what you know where are you in life and let's make sure this house fits your needs cuz I care about that like cause I want people to to be so happy in their house that they tell 100 of their friends and if 
they're not happy with the house I sold them because I sold them the wrong house because they didn't know they're wise. I'm not doing my job. And it takes us to the next level. And I think it's me and Sam are very similar in that, that, you know, we try and figure out what people really want and give them what they need rather than what they think they need. You know, because we've been there, we realize that you don't want this. This isn't for you, you know. You, you know, you can have a bunch of kids. You don't want a house on a corner with no backyard. You know, you're going to need a backyard for the swing set and this and that. Yeah, it's a little cheaper than the house next door, but you're going to be sorry when you don't have a backyard and you have six kids. You know, they start laughing and they said, it's usually I slide the six kids in there and everyone, it's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like six kids? Like, so anyway, but um, I think that personal level that we have, those personal connections, those, those real, you know, just that bonding that we have with our, with our clients and our friends, it really, uh, <laughs> raise up like that, cut that thing off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so many people have the barriers up these days, you know, whether it be yes. real estate or sales or whatever, they're just, they're, they're waiting and you see it in, in webinars, you see it on sales calls. It's like, yeah, here comes the offer, you know, here yeah. comes the pitch, here comes the yeah. high pressure yeah. and their barrier goes up. If you can be relatable and be real and be genuine when it does come back around the business, yeah. it's so much better. I mean, we told our, well, our real estate agent worked for the an agency that hired me multiple times to speak in division boards with their team. So we didn't have that awkwardness, mm. but I even reached out and told her, I said, look, we're going to go this Saturday, three and a half years ago. We're going to go look at a couple of houses. We're not even going to talk to you until we find the house we want. Mm. We don't even want to deal with all that crap. Yeah, yeah. So we went, looked at three super quick, said no to all three. They just, they weren't right. They weren't right. We knew what we wanted. We knew why we wanted it. My whole thing was, look, we just need a way to connect a generator to power up because we're in a small town, a lot of woods, ice storms, stuff like yeah, that, sure. lose power. I wanted that. You know, said central air so you're not humping air conditioners in and out of windows yeah. every six months. We go look at three houses. We go, nope. And it's only like 11 o'clock in the morning at that point. So Tina gets on her phone. She goes, huh, where's Tracy Lane? I'm like, I've never heard of it. We're in this town that I don't know a lot about. She goes, well, there's a star. Oh, there's an open house. You want to go? We drive all around through all these winding back roads thinking, oh, my gosh, we are. If we see a Canadian cop on a horse, we are not moving here. We're in God's country now. And, oh, yeah, pretty much. And we turn the street and we look at it. We go, oh, my gosh, that's beautiful. Well, the real estate agent was talking with another couple. He said, folks, just please go all or anywhere in the house you want to go. If you have any questions, ask. We went down to the basement and my wife says, how come there's two circuit breaker boxes? And I look over, it says Generac. There yeah. is a uh, whole yeah. house propane generator, awesome. yeah, which a, is like 12, 15 grand. I said, yeah. I'm in. And she looks feature, up and yeah. she goes, she sees the duct work and she goes, it's yeah. got central air. Yeah, there we go. Checks the box. We went upstairs. I went one way. She went the other way to the master bedroom and I hear her voice, honey, come here. I'm like, I can't even tell where you are. This house is big. And she goes, come down here. And I go into the master bedroom. I go, where are you? She leans her head out of a walk-in closet. And she goes, this closet is so big, it has its own window. And I just said, we're buying this house. <laughs> you just know. And even when though you the know, deal you know. fell apart three times. Yeah. But it, it was everything we said we wanted. I mean, mm. visualization, right? We pictured what we yeah. wanted. Had a big basement because I wanted. To, I knew I was going to take a quarter of it and make a recording studio. I mean, that was a big part of, of it course, for me. Yeah, yeah. And all these things were there. And we just cut out all these people telling us, this is what you want. Da, 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 da. We just said, when we find it, we'll call you. You take handle the deal. Yeah. And that's it. And yeah. Brian, Brian can attest to this. But when, when you hear, uh, when, when you're doing an open house and you hear, honey, come here, you can just, you just yeah. get the paperwork. You just get the paperwork ready at that point. Because yeah. uh, the wife. The wife sport the place. The telltale so, signs. Yeah. It starts talking about, all right, we, <laughs> yeah. we can put the couch here, and we can put the bed here. Yes, we can do this. When yes. they start laying when out they, the furniture, you know the old When they start stuff. laying out the furniture. Yeah. 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 And we can put the Christmas we, tree We here. shifted our furniture this weekend. Yeah, we'll mix it Tina up. Tina came to me with a pen, and she's she's like, okay, Mr. Visualization guy. She got a pen and paper, and she goes, what if we move the couch here? And essentially what we did, we shifted the entire living room 90 degrees. Mm. We just took everything inside it and turned it counterclockwise, one wall. And as soon as we did it, I went, whoa, yeah. it changed the energy of the house. It's now I got a couple of holes to fix in the wall, but um, just amazing. And she had the vision of it first Yeah, and it, it fixed Weird all of the energy. I just did. I just painted the bedroom and had everything out of the room and put it back together. Same thing. It took everything 90 degrees. I was like, the room was like a little bit longer one way and I'm like, 
it looks better if I do this. And I put the bed like that, and I'm like, what do you think? I'm like, oh, it looks completely different. So now I get up and I almost walk into the wall because I'm used to like getting up into like a space area. And now it's closer. <laughs> So, so in the beginning, I'd get up and I'd look and I'd go, wait, there's a wall there. I gotta turn. I gotta turn now. I used to be able to like walk straight out, you know. But uh, yeah. but the room feels bigger because it's just the, the longer room with the bed in the longer direction. And but uh, it's amazing how just moving the furniture feels like a completely different room. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It mixes it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it changes our energy too. Yes. I mean, I walked in there yesterday. In my head, I was still picturing the old setup, and I walked in, and I just looked at it now, and just, I lit up, because we spent, first off, we spent the day working together, you know, lifting stuff, I mean, moving stuff, having fun, we get those little cushion things to put under the couch, yeah. so, you know, we didn't break our backs, yeah, we could push it without, because we got beautiful yeah. hardwood floors, we did not want to scratch those, and it just became a great, amazing weekend of the two of us in our house, Awesome. shifting and creating better energy we made a great dinner together and we just sat on the couch with the tv on a different wall and it just felt amazing it's like a new house right yeah. <laughs> i think yep. it's a stimulation that we all look for you know whether you're adhd or not mm -hmm. uh, i think we all like stimulation we all like new things we all like shiny objects and now it's a it's, mm -hmm. it's a little it's new shiny again you know that this this object that you know this room that was boring now has a shine on it again and you know, in yeah. six years, you switch it back the other way and it'll shine again. You know, it's like, <laughs> but uh, I think, like I said, switching stuff up and then changing it around, it just, just breaks the monotony. Yeah. That, that, except I think a lot of times that hamster in a wheel just constantly yeah. just keeps coming back. You just get so used to the same, get out of bed on the same side and walking the same way and walking over the dresser. Now I got to go, instead of went left, now I go right to the dresser. It's like, wait a minute, like this is, yeah. and it, like it just shakes things up. And like I said, it changes the energy maybe or something. It's really just. I wake up in the morning the last couple of days, I just feel different. Like, cause I'm literally just making a left instead of a right out of the bed. And it's like, you know, it's just yep. a silly thing, but it really, I think almost we need that. We need something to just pop us off, make us think again, you know, so you don't break yeah. the, uh, break the monotony, you know, and it doesn't take much. So many people think, yeah. you know, that one vacation of the year, that one week a year is going to change. Do subtle changes throughout the year. Yep. I mean, like, like you, you know, you, you switched it. We switched our bedroom 180 degrees. Yeah a couple of months ago. So now I'm, you know, the bathroom is, is a short walk now where I used to be the one walking all the way around, but just little changes like that in, and because the sunlight now hits us differently than it did before, right. you know, as far as the way the bedroom is set up, it just feels totally different. It's almost and, like and when you go to a hotel, it. like, and you wake up in a bed and you're like, all right, you get out of bed and it's like, right, which way to the bathroom? Like, you know, like that, that that's almost that same feeling I'm getting now. Like, Right, it's different. Like you're like, I gotta think for a second when I get up, and you know, yeah. you don't think about it. Like it sounds silly, but I found myself the other morning. I got up and I went to step up quick, and I go, like, "I got the wall's there. I gotta go this way now." You know, it's like you force a habit. You're just so trained to just do the same thing over and over, and that same routine. And yep. um, like you said, I think it's stimulated. It's kind of fun. Now it's like a, you know, I go in the bedroom, I'm like that's cool. It's like all right, it's like it's like being in a hotel room now. It's different. You know, they have the fun of traveling. Is is new, right? <laughs> Yeah, you just don't have those little tiny soaps. No, yeah, well, I steal them from the hotel. So. Full, full size soap. Yeah. <laughs> full size soap. <laughs> my wife Tina used to travel quite a bit, so she would come home with all of those in her suitcase because we used to bring them to the homeless shelters. Mm. So we told friends of ours, and, yeah, yeah. and like I ten like of that. them went to Vegas. They brought an empty suitcase and filled it with shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and soaps. That's awesome and razors and brought it back and we had i think i think they said it was 23 pounds wow. of stuff because they weighed the suitcase and we brought it all to a shelter and it, just awareness now every time they go traveling they're going do they still need the stuff yes they do and and now that that's brought excitement to their travel yeah and they give you tons of it you can go on a, the apps and they have all like the hotel apps now and you can get like four extra shampoos and four extra soaps and all that and they'll just give it to you to happy and take it yeah. take it home and pile it up i traveled this is the most i've ever traveled in my life was this year i did uh texas six times and i did florida twice and like literally i'm lucky i flew once a year and i got little soaps all over the place now <laughs> yeah. you, like you're leaving i'm like i thought he's in the, in the thing you know and then you're like you get home and I'm like well, i don't need to travel with soap because the soap's gonna be there so you throw it in a drawer and then i got a whole drawer full of little soaps and i'm like what the hell do i do with these and i'm like you know what i was at the homeless shelter tonight and i got i lost 75 pounds so i said to the girl in charge i said I got a bunch of fat clothes. I need to get out of my house and out of my closet. Like, do you want them? She goes, yes, I want them. Like, you know, big clothes, whatever. It's better than no clothes. Like, we'll, we'll take anything you got. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I got an excuse coming up. We got Christmas coming. I got some time. I'm going to go through the closet one more time. Give her the next round of fat clothes because I'm not going back. 
and I'm gonna bring in two garbage bags, you know, big garbage bags full of clothes, and you know, kind of I need to get it out because then it's too easy to. Uh, I gained a couple pounds, I go back into the big pants again, you know. And, you know, when that option's there, it's like, eh, all right, those ones I bought when I was skinny, yeah, they're, they're over on that side now. We're we're back into this side again, and no, no, no. If I don't fit in those, we stop eating. <laughs> you know, I gotta get them out of the closet. So. But, uh, well, that's a great thing with Apex too. Is I'm I'm down between twenty and probably 23 pounds now over the past X amount of months started walking, you know, we got G code, you yes. got, you got the gratitude, you've got, uh, the, you know, grinding and you get, I, I can't remember where all the G's are. Ryan's and some great. It's, it's yeah, so yeah exactly. Um, but, but all these things, you know, I started walking, I started going to the gym, I started drinking water, I haven't had a drop of alcohol in almost eight months. Yeah, that's, uh, and I, and just, right I just look at it <laughs> and I just look at it and go, no, nah, not today. I'm, I'm working too hard and having too much success. Eating well, eating one plate of food per meal instead of you know two, three sometimes, and just being a part of this organization. But the gratitude every day. It's it's the the, the five things you're grateful for in your G Code app, and plus every morning I put pen to paper in a journal and I write down my three favorite moments from the previous day. So I'm, I'm, I'm ending the gratitude. Mm -hmm. well, is you know first thing tomorrow morning. The thing I'm grateful for is being a part of this broadcast yes. because. Being aware of an opportunity. Yes, it's fun. You get on and hang out with two cool guys yeah. and just have this conversation because we never know who's in the shadows right now. Yes. We just stumbled across it and said, I really like the energy these guys share. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's relatable. And like I said, you know, the struggles that we've had in our lives, whether it be, you know, like I said, I lost 75 pounds. Um, I've drank too much. Sam's drank too much. Sam lost a bunch of weight too. But we've all been there. We've all had those stressful moments. We all thought we have, we have some people in our lives that, or heavy drinkers now that in Apex, and we've kind of reached out and said, "Listen, we've been there, and we've seen the signs, and you might want to, you know, you might want to back off it a little bit." And, no, I'm different than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and Sam, and everyone, we're all different than everybody else. I'm 28 days on uh, phase two of 75 hard, so 28 days without a drink, and I take it or leave it. I, I'm one of those like I start with one, and then it'll be two nights a week, and it starts creeping up on me. And next thing you know, I'm like, oh. and I jump back on a 75 hard, and I go a month off again. And I'm like. Why the hell was I drinking? Like, I feel so good. Like, I literally, like, like mm. I just feel so good. And then it's funny, a couple people said, like, you seem different. And I'm like, oh, I haven't drank in a month. And I'm like, you know, and not that I would get up and drink or that, but, you know, you mm. have a bottle of wine, you know, I have a glass of wine, two glasses of wine. Next thing you know, two nights a week, three nights a week, four nights a week. Before you know, it just starts creeping up. And then holiday season's bad. That's how I, I, last year I did 75 hard, full through holidays, and now I'm doing it 30. And I was like, why'd you do it through the holidays? I said, because. That's when I would drink seven nights a week. That's when I would eat seven nights a week. And, you know, if I go out and have a couple of drinks, then I go out and eat a little bit more. And I make bad choices. Where's Mark? Make good choices, you know? And uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's really, anyone that hasn't done 75 hard, I say do it all the time. I mean, just, just do it. It's, it's life-changing. It's like literally, you know, a lot of people I've talked to, myself included, when I first did 75 hard, I had not drank in 75 days since I was like 16. We would, in high school, we'd drink every weekend. It was like once we could figure out how to get alcohol, we started drinking. And my whole life, I've probably drank every weekend at least, and then you start moving into the weeks. And again, not that I was like a raging alcoholic, but it, it affects your you know, your purpose. Uh, uh, Mike Claudio's thing about taking the edge off, and have you heard his uh, his podcast on that? It made mm -hmm. so much sense. You know what? Like, uh, if you got to find it, he talks about how I had a rough day. I'm going to have a drink to take the edge off, right? Mm. And stuff happens in your life. I'm going to have a drink to take the edge off. You're constantly taking the edge off, and every time you're doing that, you're dulling the blade, you're dull, dulling your sharpness. And mm -hmm. think about it, it makes a lot of sense, because now I'm losing my focus. Now, instead of getting up and getting going, I'm getting up and nursing the headache, and I'm getting up and trying to drink a bunch of water to make my headache go away, and, and I'm tired because I'm on four hours of sleep because I stayed out to 2 o'clock in the morning drinking, because I should have been in bed, but everyone's hanging out at the bar, and I decided I was going to hang out with them, and then i got to go to work, and... 6 a.m. So I'm on four hours of sleep and I'm a little hungover and now I'm trying to just survive rather than thrive. And it's just stupid that we torture ourselves like this. We all do it. We all do it. We all have those mornings where you're like, why the freak did I do that? And then we do it again the next weekend, you know, and it's, and everyone talks about it. Everyone knows they do it. And we all do it. We're idiots, you know. So the realization that, you know, listen, there's a better way out there and you know, I say like, not that I won't drink again, but uh, you know, it gives me that reality check, that pullback of, you know, why are you doing this to yourself? Like, like it, it, it's not serving the greater good for your yourself. You know, yourself. You know, I talked about the other morning. Everything you do in life does it serve the greater good? Like, you need to ask yourself that question: Is what I'm, where I'm going, what I'm doing, who I'm talking to, does it is 
is it serving my greater good? If it's is it toxic to me, you know, mentally, is it toxic to me physically, you know, you know, and you really, you know, we do so many things in our lives that, like, don't serve our greater good. And, like, why are we wasting time on this? Why are we, you know, if someone's completely negative all the time and just, you know, steals your joy, why do we hang out with them? And we keep going mm -hmm. back for more. We keep going back for the punishment. And we're like, why? Why? Like, every time I hang out with this person, I go home and I'm like, I'm like oh, I hate, the, I hate life. I hate the world. And I'm like, wait, I didn't before I hung out with them. But, you know, they say, well, if someone says, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, you go, you're right, this sucks. You know. Yep. Yeah. That's why I kicked about 60% of my contacts out of my phone three or four years ago. I was, um, if I was between meetings, I'd just go, you know, park somewhere to, you know, some big store parking lot. And just, I would just call people. How's your day? How's your day? How's your day? And, and one day I just, for whatever reason, the mood I was in, I'm looking at my phone. I go, oh, I'll call some people. And I'm going, nope, 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 yeah. nope. Going to be negative. Going to complain. Yeah. Going to da, 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 da. I said, what the hell am I doing here? Uh, you know, I, some people say, oh, Steve, we love when you call because you're always positive. I'm like, yeah, you complain the whole time. Yeah. And then a week later, you you call me again and say, I'm having a bad day. Make me laugh. I'm like, you're having a bad life because you're, you're choosing, you're making the decision every single time I talk to you to be negative. Yeah. Nothing against you. You're, you're a cool person and we've been friends a long time. But look, I can't be yeah. around that energy anymore. It sucks delete, the energy delete, out of you. you know, it literally delete, delete. drains I, your battery. It literally took 60% of contacts okay. out of the phone. Well, that's what I love about Apex now. All these people that I've, you know, all day long I get, you know, they got we got 200 Apex friends. You know, you're, if you got 200 Apex friends, you're a friend of mine, you know, and friend, friend, friend. And my news feed is full of, of just positive message at the positive message. I get like local friends and stuff that like, you know, you, they think you know about stuff because it's been on Facebook. I'm like, I haven't seen your Facebook feed in, in months because it's full of apex, you know, yep. you know, change your life, do better, help this, you know, strategies. And it's like, it's actually, I almost say it's like, it's, you know, drinking out of fire. It gets overwhelming at points. I want to read so many posts, but I just can't lose that much time on social media. And it's not yeah. like I'm, surfing crap i'm literally learning and and filling my, <coughs> my head with stuff but it's yeah. just uh it's really drinking up a fire hose yeah it's wow. a good feeling though <laughs> just when you when you get up in the morning and the first 20 posts you see are all you you realize you go oh my gosh my news feed is awesome today oh yeah apex <laughs> apex 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 and it's it's who you surround yourself with and it's the energy you bring because it yes. you know you 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 level I, I know level up gets used a lot but you just start rising up to, to meet this other energy. Yes. And then you add a comment or you, you hit like, or you DM somebody or like, you know, we we're talking, you leave somebody voice, but Hey man, I really love that message that you shared on social media this morning. Hey, by the way, I shared it. You know, this, uh, one of our apex brothers, Kyle Reed mm. put up an incredible post this morning about how he, he just, he got up yesterday and made a brunch breakfast for him and his wife. And she has an allergy that she can't eat eggs. So he leaned his head out the kitchen door to her and said, hey, babe, you want some sausage? So he made her like a whole pan of sausage patties. And I mean, that's the stuff I love. I actually yeah. shared that. I, I sent Kyle a message to go, yeah. hey, brother, I shared your post because I thought it was just awesome. Just yeah. that energy. And that's that's what we're all about. Yes. Yeah. It's it, it's creating not just, you know, this money, 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 but the successful, healthy life relationships. I mean, the work I do with people, we work in eight major areas of life. If you're just about grinding on money, and I've had people say, Steve, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm 53 years old. So my mindset is not what it was 30 hmm. years ago. Steve, I'm gonna work like 90 hours a week this year. I'm gonna make you a million bucks. I'm gonna grind, grind, grind. I go, okay, no problem. You married? Yep, you won't be. Mm -hmm. We know that one, we know that one well. Yeah. I can, yeah. And, and that's part of, you know, what led to my first divorce. I was working six, seven days a week and just burnt out, grind, grind, grind. And, and self-centered because, you know, I got to get oh, this done. Yeah. And I don't care about anybody else because I have all this work to do. And you don't understand my struggle. Go away. I got to do this work. And pushing people away, pushing people away, and they stay away. And you're like, what did I yep. do? Now, okay, great. I got money. I'm all by myself. That sucks. Yep. You know? And when you're grinding like that, you're not eating good food. Yep. You're not putting good stuff in. You're not remembering to drink water or yep. drink healthy stuff at least. You're, you're, you're taking the edge off all the time because you're fried. Yeah. So you're having mm -hmm. a drink or two. I mean, I used to have a, a My head was this I used big. to have a <laughs> tall rum and Coke every night. Now it wasn't an addiction as much as just getting rid of the stress of the day. Yeah. Well, then all of a sudden you realize you've hit 247 pounds. And even though you're six foot two, 
that's still a lot and just put it down. And of course, now when I, we hang out with the friends, we used to, you know, hang out and just have a couple of drinks with whatever. They'll go, Steve, what do you want? I'm like, ah, you know, just a, a couple ice waters with a little lemon or, or maybe, maybe a ginger ale. But if I drink a can of Coke now, when I'm with those people, I drink it and I go, oh my God, they changed the formula. This tastes yeah, like it's crap. gross, right? It's like pure, I, go, I go, pure sugar. It yeah. doesn't taste like coconut anymore. And, and they go, hey, idiot, it used to be half rum. <laughs> <laughs> like oh that's why it used yeah, to taste yeah, better yeah, yeah. And, and they're cool because that's the people i choose to hang with they respect my decision to not drink i don't judge them for drinking i don't lecture them no. I, I, hey you know what i i'm hanging out being just as funny and having just as much fun as we ever did except now i feel better i find a lot of people actually i feel like almost they're like envying you for not drinking like because they're like wow he's got he's got the balls to not drink like, it's almost like an empowerment thing. Like, when you're out at a bar and you can order a seltzer and be happy and laugh and joke and everyone else is getting trashed and you're going, wow, he's going to have a rough morning. Oh, he's going to have a rough morning. And you're like, I'm going to get up and ride my bike at 6 a.m. Like, and I'm going to go home from the bar and 75 hard. I'm going to go home from the bar tonight and I'm going to jump on a treadmill for 45 minutes to get my last workout in. It's like, I'm not doing that if I was drinking. And I, it's like empowering to, to take control, to know that you're owning it. And it's like, you know, and I don't know. It's, it's just... A really different feeling. I feel like when you first, like, if, you, if you're out in 75 hour, you're not drinking, you kind of feel like, oh, people are looking at me weird. And I, I think it the other way. I think pe a lot of people are like, I wish I could do that. Like, I wish I could, I could have that kind of willpower, you know, that kind of strength to go out to the bar and not, not order a drink. You know, and I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten to the point, as the one thing I say, oh, I did Weight Watchers years ago, and the Weight Watch, Weight, Watch, Weight Watchers coach, my friend's mom, um, said basically if you're going to do something off your diet it better be the best freaking thing you've ever got if you're going to eat chocolate cake it better be the best chocolate cake you've ever had in your life if you're going to have a drink it better be or you have a glass of wine it better be the best glass of wine ever because if it is great enjoy it you deserve it but yep. don't just eat any chocolate cake don't just have a glass of shit wine because it's a glass of wine like if you're going to go out and have a fancy mixed fruity cocktail that tastes really good get that don't just drink straight vodka out of a glass because it's vodka like you know just if you're gonna do something bad do it to the best bad that you can be and it's funny i find myself years later just thinking about that is it worth eating that like that's you know chocolate chip cookie like no it's not like a homemade cookie it's a regular junk store-bought cookie like i don't need that and yep. i have that conversation in my head all the time and i look at a lot of things in life is this is this the best nope then like leave it like walk away from it and uh, it's a really good thing to have that voice in your head making that decision if it's not the best don't don't eat it if it's the best go for it you yeah. know so it's uh just i just developed healthier habits you know I, I started making fruit smoothies in the morning and and over time they morphed because you know people like clint riggan and all the other you know healthy and in yeah. workout yeah. And, yeah. and nutrition people inside of apex hey have you ever tried this you ever tried that so now i have this concoction that i call mango swamp it's a bed of baby kale organic baby kale some uh low fat low sugar uh vanilla greek yogurt uh, a tablespoon of cinnamon and some chopped up mango, pineapple and blueberries and wow. a banana and some ice and a quarter cup of coconut water and blend that up. And it just, it tastes good. Yeah, It's healthy. And, and that's what I drink first thing in the morning after I get back from my walk. And during the summer, I was walking a lot in the, uh, the back roads. And I found out that in the three directions I could go, there are people who own roosters. And I just, every morning when I was out walking, I hear the rooster crowing. I'm like, he's cheering me on. Yeah, so it. we'd be out with friends like, Steve, have a drink. No, I can't. Why? Because uh, I got to go walking in the morning. And if I don't, that rooster is going to be really pissed that he can't be cheering me on. Yeah. So I, I need to be clear headed. And, I like it. And, uh, I'll just drink some water. And, and plus, I got to get up and have mango swamp. And yeah. yeah. I, I find I crave like good food now. I crave going for vegetables. I crave. Like, I, I, you get such a good feeling when you're eating right, and you feel so bad. Um, you know, like, when you eat wrong, like, you know, like, once in a while, I mean, I haven't done it in a while, but, you, like, you'll have, like, McDonald's. You're out in a run, and you're, like, Ugh. starving, and you're, like, you know what, yep. uh, 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 whatever, I'll just give me a cheeseburger and french fries. And you have that, and you're, like, what the freak did I do to myself? Like, And then your stomach goes, Ooh. Yeah, the salt. And, and it all reminds of sudden your joints you. hurt, and everything swells up, and you're like, <laughs> like, what are you, an idiot? You know, and then it's like, all right, give me yeah. some, like, you know, spinach. Give me some, you know, vegetables. Give me some fruits, yeah. you know. Um, I'm eating stuff I couldn't spell six months ago, and I'm actually liking it, which yeah. is really good. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of my goals for next year, it, it's the healthier <laughs> stuff. And, and the new vision board, it's going to have, 
you know, that's going to be a big part of it is, is the healthy eating, the healthy choices, yeah. lots of water. And, and My goal is learn to spell more foods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, started doing yeah, and I, I literally, I went to the grocery store to find some of this stuff and I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't know how to spell it, but it sounds like this. Like yeah. I literally couldn't spell some of the stuff I'm eating now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they led me over to it and, you know, it just felt good. It's, it still feels good. You know, Dude, don't laugh. I, I was 39 before I realized that quinoa was pronounced quinoa. <laughs> well, there's that TV commercial. And every time we have quinoa, Tino will ask me, how do you pronounce this? I'm like, Joaquin. Because there's some commercial where they're trying to pronounce quinoa. It's quinoa. That's what it's yeah, quinoa. quinoa. quinoa yeah. That's how I used to say it. Yeah. And I, I, was, I, I almost, feel like, it's almost feel like you're beating the system when you can eat healthy and enjoy it. It's like. You know what? I'm eating yeah. healthy, and it was good. You know, like, like I, I got into sushi, right? So sushi's a lot healthier than most of the crap I used to eat, right? So you're like, you know, you go out for like a big chicken parm and spaghetti and pasta and all that stuff, and you know, you're like, oh, like what did I do? Or even a giant steak. We went to the steakhouse uh, for the New York Apex meetup. We went to the steakhouse, and I ordered sushi, and I felt so good. Like, you know, you order a giant steak and butter on top and all and then you eat and it's really good going down and the next morning you're like, oh my stomach's killing me you know eat the sushi next morning you wake up okay good we're going on a bike ride like, i feel good I'm like next time i'm gonna remember that no, mental note sushi tasted good and i feel it good in the morning it's not a brick in my stomach you know so uh and i said i, I feel like you're beating the system i'm a, a grapefruit something I, I got into so like in the morning i like to eat grapefruit it's kind of it's kind of like a it's almost like candy like a good grapefruit it's like and it's kind of like refreshing and kind of like you know okay it's like eating halloween candy you know now you eat halloween candy like this sucks give me a grapefruit you know it's like uh your whole mindset your whole lifestyle changes as as you become aware of your surroundings you become aware of what you're putting in your body awareness is yep. huge and I don't, I don't crave the bad stuff anymore yeah. I, I really don't i mean we we do a lot of baking for the homeless shelter and uh, we bake cookies, we bake loaves of bread. Like I said, the, my mom and stepmom today made 70 little banana breads. And every once in a while, people are like, well, Steve, you eat healthy now. You should be making healthy stuff for the homeless shelter. I'm like, well, okay, hold on. There's no homeless person who wakes up on the banks of the river this morning, scrapes the ice out of their eyes and says, boy, I hope that, you know, it's somebody makes a mango swamp <laughs> smoothie with a, you know, green tea freaking chaser in it today. Yeah. I get it's comfort food. It, yeah. It's people who, who don't, you know, I mean, yeah. we make some healthy stuff too and yeah. some meals. Homemade banana bread. Like not to the make end of the world. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, yeah. We like to make some treats as well for them. And, and one of the directors, and, and I know Brian, you'll based on what you said earlier, you'll relate to this. I went in there one time on a Saturday and I had, I only had time to bake. I think it was 24 chocolate chip or oatmeal raisin cook. Oh, it was chewy coconut cookies. My favorite one that they love. Mm. And I said, I I'm sorry. I only have 24 cookies today. I, I, I apologize. And the director smacked me on the arm and he goes, look, look me in the eyes. He goes, don't you ever walk in this door and apologize for only being able to bring mm. this much. And this is what I tell people all the time when they say, well, when I have more, I'll give more. He goes, we're thankful to get anything. We're thankful to have a five-day-old Entenmann's that we have to actually physically break off the foil yeah. to eat. And it's hard as a rock. He goes, we're thankful for that. He goes, here's what happens. He goes, when one of the beach bums, which our thing is beach bum philanthropy, he goes, when we see one of the beach bums comes in, he goes, everybody in here that knows you knows it was made with love. And he goes, usually, I don't know how the hell you do it. They're usually still warm when you get here. Mm -hmm. He says, don't you ever, he goes, Steve, you could walk in here with one cookie. And we'd be thankful for that. Mm. This is so tall. You know, and I say that to people. I said, stop saying someday and when I have. Yeah. One canned good could be a meal somebody wouldn't have. Work with your kids. Bake a thing. Get a log of cookie dough. Mm. Chop it into little pieces. Make yeah. cookies and bring it to a shelter. And my kids all but bake. They what love a lesson. Bake. Yeah, yeah. I should do that. What? I should make them bake and take them to the shelter. Yeah. That's what a, a lesson that is for yeah, your kids. I like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's just changing lives. I mean, you, you really take for granted. And, you know, like I said, it was an analogy that I've heard out in, in our world a little bit. And it, it could be a little dark if I read it. But we all talk about, I can only help one person. I can only bring one cookie. I can only, only one person watched my live. Only one person watched my message. That type of thing. But if a bus crashed and one person got killed, is that a lot of people? Right? No, no it's one people. One, yeah. One, one person. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like... Yep. You know, but you think about it in that way, like, like you know, 50 people on a bus and bus crashes and someone gets hurt. Someone that that one person person's really important. 
So That's why true. don't we look at it like that? Why do we look at it only one? It's like, you know, um, and it's just a weird flip to, to flip your, your mind on it and say, all right, one person got my message today and was inspired. One person got to eat a homemade cookie today. Like, you know, that whole just that flip of the mindset, uh, positive to negative, you know, which glass half empty, half full. That's a big one all the time, you know, try and keep that glass on the half full side, you know. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. all mindset. And we all have, yeah, it's mindset and it's impact. And if, if you just think that you just want to impact one person today, if you go into the world like that every single day, you're going to do so much better. Because, in, in somebody said this today inside of Apex, stop worrying about how many likes and how many comments and this and the algorithm and all that. We got no control over any of that. Yeah. Keep sharing something every single day. And, and that's the same attitude I take if I'm on a Zoom call yeah. or leading a webinar or when I'm on stage in front of an audience. I mean, I, I had a guy approach me in a grocery store. This is like seven, eight years ago. He walks past me and he turns around. We're in, we're in the Captain Crunch aisle, which is, that was my favorite cereal when I was a kid. He goes, hey man, you're that speaker, right? And I turned around. We're the only two in the aisle. I said, yes, sir, I'm a speaker. I said, what do you remember? And he told me the picture that was on the screen, the story I told, the lesson of it, and how he used it the following week to get himself a job. I was speaking in front of 82 unemployed people. Nice. Just just giving them hope and, and picking them life. up a bit. Yeah, change that life. Yeah. He we figured it out. It had been three years since wow. that event. I said, Man, I can't believe you remember that story. He goes, Hell, I never thought I'd see you again. Holy crap. He goes, Good thing you kind of look the awesome. same. That's awesome. And we had a great laugh, but it just felt so good yeah. that that day. No, I didn't I didn't get paid a dime for that event. I, yes, I did. You, did. <laughs> you got paid a lot. <laughs> well, no, I did. But I mean, the day of, there was that no speaker of, yeah. fee. I did 43 events for the state of Mass and state of New Hampshire, all for free that was worth a million dollars to yes. me because this guy took, and again, what was it? This piece of motivational firewood, right? Yes. He wanted the job. Yeah. He just was so down on himself. And all the lesson was, was wherever you are, find the people with the best energy and vibe with them. Mm -hmm. And they just happened to be on the other okay. side of the table being a three person interview process. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, I locked on to their energy. And we had a great conversation. Nice. I said, and he goes, Oh hell, I got the job. Nice. That made now here I am eight years later talking about this. That's awesome. That's how so much cool. it meant to me. So cool. it, it, I get emotional over stuff like that. Yeah. I really do. You never know who you're touching. You never know who That's you're true. It's, yeah. it's really wild. We we take it for granted of just yeah. so how, don't hold how powerful back. our our thoughts are, our gut is, our our, our voices and you know, our messages are. Like we really take it for granted when people reach out out of the blue and just go, "Hey, you know, thank you." And I'm like, "What? What did I do?" And they're like. No, thank yeah. you. I needed that. I was going through some shit, and what you said really made sense, and I made some change in my life, and, and I'm better for it. And they're like, wow, like, holy cow, this is really cool, <laughs> you know? This, yeah. this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is my purpose, you know? So, Makes yeah. it all worthwhile, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Those are the moments I look up and I go, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I'm yeah. supposed to be here. Yeah. Boys, it's about time we wrap this show up. Otherwise, yeah, we're, we're going to be here till tomorrow. Yeah. We're going to be here till tomorrow. That's it. So, so uh steve right, man thanks for joining us pal i was my uh, pleasure a real, was awesome. real fun chat awesome. for the last hour and a half yeah. um before we get off here where can people find your stuff What's nice and easy uh, yeah, motivational firewood.com is where everything is vision awesome. board program is there and some some cool free stuff as well yes sir awesome. all right well, go check out Steve's stuff, and uh, I'm going to get out of here. Brian, yes, you getting it. out of here too? That's it. We're getting out of here. I got to go do my uh, ride at dawn because this morning I uh, wound up going to start working and fixing a broken pipe in a restaurant at 6 a.m., so I couldn't get my ride in, and uh, funny story, you'll see. If you look at my, I did my message from Home Depot this morning, so if you go back, you can see the message, but I didn't get my <laughs> ride in, so now I'm going to ride 10 miles at 10 o'clock at night. 10 for 10. Good for you, mate. Then Good for you. That. Um, Merry Christmas to everybody out there that uh, celebrates, that's uh, coming yeah. up this week. Make sure you stop. Stop what you're doing. Enjoy the time. Enjoy the season. Enjoy the people around you. Enjoy the family. The grind will be there when it's you get back. You have a pass to stop. You need to remember that. I like that. Yeah. So. All right. Well, Merry Christmas. We'll right, see well, you all in Merry it. Christmas. Right. Thanks for coming all out, right. man. I appreciate you. Yes. All right. There we go. Have a great all right. Day.